What is up, y'all? This is Andy with Poster Grind, your neighborhood art director that designs movie posters for a living. Today, I'm going to show you a quick and easy way to create some awesome drippy and trippy typography for your next project. We'll be using Adobe Illustrator, and then we'll be using the 3D and Materials function. And then once we have what we like, we're going to drop it into Photoshop, add a little bit of a shadow, and finalize everything. <laughs> What? As soon as you have Photoshop and Illustrator fired up, head to Illustrator. Go ahead and type out the word that you want to use for this project. I went with Drippy, and the type of font that I'm using is called Groupy Regular. Once you have your type selected, go ahead and right click hit Create Outlines, and then you can kind of go ahead and modify your type as needed. For this situation, I'm going to make the P a little on the drippier side and the R a little bit on the drippier side just to make this more customized. So now I'm going to hit A on my keyboard and then I'm going to select some anchors and just basically drag this down a little bit. And the same thing, I'm going to do this over here to kind of balance it out a little more and drag it down. Something like that. So now I'm just going to go ahead and select everything and then change the color of the typography. I already have this bubblegum color selected. So I'm going to hit I on my keyboard, bring up the eyedropper, and then just hit that same color. And like that, I have my colors ready to go. Now head over to your 3D and materials, go to object, and then from object, go to inflate and that's going to three-dimensionalize our typography. Now you can go ahead and play with the settings, but one of the most important ones right now is to hit inflate both sides. And then one other little thing I like to do is play with the Y axis just to kind of give it a little bit of an angle, and that'll give us a little bit more three-dimensionality. So for today, I'm just gonna go with negative four. Let's go ahead and select our materials. So go to the materials tab. And we'll just keep it at the base material default. The roughness can stay the same and everything can pretty much stay the same. Now let's go mess with the lighting. So in the lightings tab, we're going to increase the intensity a tad. We're gonna to go to 85. Then we're going to decrease the softness to 25 and then increase the intensity to 100. And this is just gonna make it a little bit more on the glossy side. We can play with shadows here, but like I was saying in the intro, we're gonna drop this into Photoshop and use shadows in Photoshop. Let's go up to the render tab, but before you hit this little render button, go to the arrow and hit ray tracing, and then make sure your quality is on high. And then also hit raster settings, and you're just gonna to wanna to make sure your resolution is at 300. Hit okay. Now that that stuff's ready to go, we can render this out by hitting render. And like that, we have this beautiful piece of typography. If you guys have dug this up until this point, please hit that like button right now. I really appreciate it. Now let's go to the selection tool, make sure everything's selected, then go ahead and hit command C, that's gonna copy it. And then we can go to Photoshop and go ahead and paste it into Photoshop. I'm gonna paste it as a smart object. Then I'm just gonna upsize it a little bit and hit enter. As you can see, I already have this really cool grungy concrete background, which I was able to find on an amazing stock website, which has licensed material. This place is called Envato.com, and I highly suggest you head over there as they have unlimited downloads on their stock photography, textures, and even video. The cool thing is that it only costs around 200 bucks a year for an annual subscription or around 16 bucks for a monthly. Now, if you guys do use it, please use our affiliate link below as we'll get a little something something for sending them business. Let's go ahead and add a drop shadow to our typography. You're gonna go to your typography layer, double click. That brings up our layer styles. And then from layer styles, we're gonna go to drop shadow. And then on drop shadow, I already have this dialed in, but you're gonna wanna reduce the opacity to 31% your angle at 64, your distance at 205, your spread at 11%, and then the size at 183 pixels. Then hit OK. Then to finalize this a little more, I'm just going to make that background a little wider by reducing the opacity on that layer. All right, you guys, I like what we got. Thanks so much for watching. If you dug this video, just hit the like button, and I look forward to seeing you on the next one.